Hey guys, Curly Susie here from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. It is Friday and I am back. Yeah. I'm gonna be posting curly hair videos every single Friday and I've never posted on the schedule before so I'm very excited. I'm gonna be doing Mommy Mondays and Curly Hair Fridays every single week. Um, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about probably the most talked about you know, controversy in the curly hair community that's been going on for the last few months or a year even really for some. Um, and that is the diva curl controversy. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about why I am not using any diva curl products anymore. I'm gonna talk about just the curly girl method in general and hair loss. You guys who watch my channel know that sometimes I get excited and I tend to ramble on and on and on. So I'm gonna to try to keep things in a specific order. I'm gonna talk about Diva Curl first and why I'm no longer using or promoting any Diva Curl products. And I just wanna start by saying that I have never been affiliated with Diva Curl. And it's funny, I started my curly hair channel and one of the first things that I did was I was like, oh, I'm a YouTuber now, I have to use Diva Curl products. And I went and I bought the full line, um, the Decadence line, I believe, that's made for curly hair. And I made a video about that, which I'm gonna link right here. So I made a very truthful video about my experience using Diva Curl for a few weeks. And for whatever reason, I had a very negative experience. Um, and because I was new on YouTube, I didn't, you know, go and, slander the company or anything like that. I just basically said my hair was looking really good. I was following the curly girl method and then I started using Diva Curl products and I felt like I ruined my hair. And fortunately for me, this happened very quickly. So again, I used them for like two weeks, I think. And my hair just all of a sudden got really hard, crispy, crunchy, and limp. And I, at the time, I mean, I know a little bit more now than I did back then, but I'm still not like a chemist or a professional stylist. But at the time, um, after doing a little bit of internet research, I just assumed that my hair was in what people refer to as protein overload. Um, and so I still didn't blame Diva Curl. I just thought, you know, my hair doesn't like products with protein in them. And so I started to avoid them. Um, and then a few months later, I was using other products that I just didn't read the ingredients list like thoroughly that were full of protein and my hair responded really well. So at the time I was just kind of like, that's weird that Diva Curl just, you know, didn't work well on my hair, but I'm kind of glad because it's expensive and um, I got to make that video and a lot of other people had the same experience as me. So it turned out to be a good video and whatever. So, you know, a year or so goes by, I'm still following the Curly Girl Method, I'm still on YouTube, and um, up until probably a month ago, I was still using Diva Curl's Wave Maker and uh, Diva Curl's Low Poo. Um, and I liked both of those products, and I still like those products, but I don't use them every single day, um, and I probably only use them like once a week or once every couple of weeks because I don't wash my hair very often and I don't use hair cream very often. But when I do use hair cream, I find found it was like a nice light hair cream. But anyways, I've never personally had a problem with those two products. Um, and I wanna be very truthful in this video about my reasons for not using Diva Curl. Um, so my reasons for not using, you know, the line of Diva Curl products is that it, basically completely changed my hair for the negative. Like it just completely made my hair limp, hard, crusty, crunchy. Um, I did not like the way it performed at all. My hair looked dull. It just went from being like shiny and curly and healthy looking for the first time in my life to looking like crap. So that's why I stopped using Diva Curl back then. The reason that I am stopping using Diva Curl altogether is because, um, I joined the message group on Facebook with like real women sharing their stories about um, just their hair breaking and their hair falling out and the issues that they have been having with Diva Curl. And I feel like um, I have a responsibility to you guys um, to protect you. So I'm never ever going to come on here and promote something that I don't believe in or that I don't feel uh, works in my hair. And I can't speak for every single product and I honestly can't tell you that low poo and no poo make your hair fall out because 
my hair, I've been using them, you know, sporadically over the last little while. Um, and I've had no issues with my hair since I stopped using like the full line of products. But there's just too many stories. So there's too many stories. There's too many pictures out there um, of before and after pictures of women who like claim that their hair was fine and they started using Diva Curl and their hair started falling out. It's really sad. Um, and I mean, I'm not going to go and delete my old videos that show me using low poo. I have no videos of me saying that I love Diva Curl or that, um, you should, you know, buy the line of Diva Curl products. I'm just saying that from this point forward, knowing what I know and, um, how many people this is affecting, I just can't consciously continue to use those products in my videos if there is a potential that they are leading to hair loss. Um, I'm not gonna go into depth about the company itself because again, this is an opinion piece and a lot of my research is internet research which isn't extremely reliable. But one thing that I do know is that, you know, in the 90s when Lorraine Massey created the Curly Girl Method and created the Diva Curl products and, you know, during that time the products were so sought after and people just adored them and adored the way they just transformed their hair and, you know, had so many good things and good reviews of the products. Back then, um, there didn't seem to be any issues with the products. I am going to talk about hair loss and the Curly Girl method in a minute, but I'm just speaking specifically about Diva Curl. Now, sometime between 2017 and 2019, I think it was closer to 2017, but on two different articles, I saw two different dates. The company was sold um, to another company and there was a disclaimer put out by this company since the controversy started stating that they didn't make any major changes to the formula of the product. But when a company says that they didn't make any major changes, it means that they did make some changes. So again, I don't have all of the facts, but with the overwhelming amount of evidence and then with the company basically saying, yes, they did change the formula, I just, again, can't uh, use the products. If you're on the Facebook and that, and you want to find out a little bit more about the group that I'm talking about, it's called Hair Damage and Hair Loss from Diva Curl. You're not crazy or alone. Anyway, there's like almost 30,000 members. Um, and that's what it looks like. And I'll leave a link to the Facebook group below. There's a lot of before and after pictures and uh, just testimonials from people who have had issues with the products. So that's all I'm going to say about Diva Curl. I'm going to leave a link to a few other people's videos below and in my cards um, so that you can click on them if this is something that you're really interested in. I've had a lot of my subscribers ask me about this and even though I knew about the controversy, I continued to use Wavemaker and I continued to use Lopu because it didn't really cause me a problem, but I just, again, as somebody who's on YouTube, I feel like I have a responsibility to make sure that these products aren't causing hair damage before I continue to promote them. So um, I won't be using them on my channel anymore or on my hair. So let's talk about hair loss and the curly girl method a little bit in this video because the whole diva curl controversy, one of the main things that people are claiming that diva curl is doing to their hair is that their hair is falling out in chunks and that they have bald spots and that their hair is very limp and it's breaking. So I just want to talk about um, hair loss that people attribute to the curly girl method because a lot of people who are using Diva Curl products are using them because they're following the Curly Girl method. So there are many reasons that you could be experiencing hair loss. And I'm about to go through one of those very shortly. With my first pregnancy, I had, uh, I suffered from postpartum hair loss. So I lost a bunch of hair, um, kind of in these two areas of my head and a little bit in the back. I mean, like I had like two bald spots with very little hair. It was very, very noticeable. Um, but that was because of hormonal changes. And I know a lot of women who've experienced the same thing. You can have hormonal changes um, due to aging. So a lot of people get regular, um, they experience regular hair loss that is associated with aging. And a lot of that is genetic. So if your mother's hair got really, really thin as she aged, then your hair may do the same or your father's. I don't know what side it's supposed to be on, but 
um, if you're taking any types of medications. What I'm trying to say is that typically hair loss, especially like gross hair loss, is a result of something systemic. So hormonal changes, um, changes in your diet, like if you're really lacking vitamins and minerals, if you're taking some type of medication, you know, chemo, um, regular hair loss associated with aging, normally it's, a, it's because of that type of thing. It's not typically caused from um, things that you're applying to the hair and scalp. I mean, unless you're putting nair on your scalp. But there are things that could definitely um, inhibit your hair from growing. So if you are following the curly girl method and you are co-washing your hair only, which I pretty much only co-wash my hair, but you are never, ever, um, you know, scrubbing your scalp and you're getting a buildup of like heavy butters and things on your scalp, or if you're using products with silicone in them and you're using heavy butters and waxes and things like that, and you're never clarifying your hair and you're never scrubbing your scalp and you have like an immense buildup, or if your hair is constantly damp, it's never drying, you're always going to bed with your hair plopped with wet hair. Um, there's things that can happen that would make your hair fall out. And I don't know the specifics, but I just know that you can get high growth fatigue and you can get like a fungal infection basically on your scalp if you're leaving your scalp moist and you're leaving all of these products on your scalp. I have never had this problem and I have gone to bed with my hair wet wrapped up before. Um, I typically only co-wash my hair, so I clarify my hair very infrequently. And I have never had these problems, but it is because I'm aware of what I'm doing and I use my fingertips and I make sure that I use warm water and I really scrub my scalp. Um, and I just am so conscious of my hair that I just don't think that I would have an issue with any of these things because if I did have buildup and my hair was getting flaky or if I had a fungal infection on my scalp or things were changing, my hair wasn't looking good, I feel like I would be very in tune with that and I would nip that in the bud like as soon as possible. So what I'm trying to say basically is that yes you may have problems with hair loss due to your hair routine but it's not necessarily because of the curly girl method because the curly girl method if it's done properly I believe is very good for your hair. Um, so why do people that start the curly girl method complain about hair loss. If you're following the curly girl method and let's say you're doing everything right, so your scalp is healthy, your hair is healthy, your hair is happy, um, you're working towards having healthier hair, but you are only you know, getting in the shower and either co-washing or shampooing your hair, let's say once a week, that's kind of typical. So let's say every Friday you get in the shower and you do a wash day. Well, if you're following the curly girl method very strictly, and you're not using a brush, you're not using heat on your hair, um, you're not really touching your hair a whole lot because you don't want to disrupt your curl pattern. Um, if you're styling your hair the way I always do, which is getting in the shower, co-washing your hair, letting your hair, putting products on your hair, sorry, in the shower, letting your hair air dry, and then just not manipulating or touching your hair very much at all until you re-wash your hair, you know, five days to a week later. When that is happening, you're not shedding any hair. So it's being shed from the root, but it's not actually falling onto the floor ever until you wash your hair and you finger detangle your hair. So if you typically lose, like the average person that brushes their hair and you know has a regular hair routine, if you typically lose a hundred hairs a day, well, you know, probably 95 of those 100 hairs, if you're brushing your hair and touching your hair and your hair is straight and you don't have a whole lot of product in it, I'd say 95% or 95 of those hairs are actually falling out of your head, you know, on the floor, in your car, in your clothes, wherever, and you never really see them or pay any attention to them ever again. Um, but if you're following the curly girl method the way I do anyway, those hairs are kind of being trapped in the rest of your hair or in your beehive as my husband calls it um, and then they're never coming out until that seventh day when you wash your hair so that's you know six or seven hundred hairs versus a hundred hairs um, that when you're finger detangling your hair they're all coming out so you end up with this clump of hair 
Um, and if you think about it practically, it totally makes sense. But if you didn't really think about that before, or if nobody ever mentioned that to you before, I can understand that that would be scary. So you were used to getting in the shower and washing your hair and having like a few hairs on your hands maybe, or none at all. And then all of a sudden you're following this new method. And every time you get in the shower, you have this big handful of hair. Um, I understand how that would be scary, but I just want you guys to think about that logically and understand the difference. Um, so that's all I'm going to say in this video. This video was meant to be kind of quick and kind of, um, I know this is kind of a sad topic and it's serious, but I wanted to keep it a little bit light and I wanted to start a conversation. So if you have had any experience with any of these things that I'm talking about, please, please talk about them in the comment section below. I'm really going to make an effort in this video to respond to all comments because this is something that I'm very interested in and I may make an update video on this when I learn a little bit more about it. But anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and give it a big old thumbs down if you didn't like it. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you next Monday if you're interested in Mommy Mondays and I'll see you next Friday if you're interested in more curly and wavy hair content. Bye.